I would say that the biggest change has been with my brain, my mental function. It's the biggest gift I've ever received in my entire life. Absolutely. I would encourage anybody to at least give it three months and see how you feel at the end of it. Hi, Stephanie. It's nice to see you. Hi, Martha. It's good to be here. You've been practicing for uh, a good part of this year, haven't you? Mm -hmm. About nine months. My class was in early March. I've been counting the months faithfully. <laughs> and you've seen quite a bit of benefit. How would you describe that? I would say that the biggest change has been with my brain, my mental function, and my, my emotions, my nervous system. I was having just tremendous uh, despondency and restlessness and anxiety that made me really tough to be around. Kind of over controlling to my kids, emotionally abusive, not knowing, not having any sense of what other people were feeling because I couldn't sense anything around me very well. I was just so wrapped up in my head and overwhelmed with sensory input from light, noise, sound, emotions. You know, what I thought I was reading from them was not what they were putting out. You know, every, everything was just chaos and anger and, and upset and unhappiness. And, you know, people in the household would bristle at each other at the slightest provocation. I was not certain at the time that I was doing the right thing because I thought embarking on this practice that would consume two to three hours a day, I didn't anticipate losing all this weight. It, it seemed like it was a huge burden on top of life that was already a terrible burden. I have six children and they all have the same thing that I have. And so the mood and the relationships in the household were in a terrible state. The first six weeks were very, very difficult because my husband did not know what I was doing, didn't understand what I was about, why I wanted to do it, because I couldn't even tell him. I was just too sick to really verbalize it. I just knew I wanted to try this, and, and so I pressed through it. And I think the nights were like a fever dream. The whole thing was like a fever dream. I, I never want to repeat that again. I never want to be that sick again. My CP was down around 12, 15. I made it through the beginner class and I was all excited about seeing some results. <laughs> but it took a solid six weeks before I got through the first amount of cleansing that happened. And then I thought I had turned a corner and I did, I did. But uh, the interlude between that and the next phase was too short. It's always too short. But I was really being diligent about practice. And so the results were coming. And that's what I like the most about this because it's not a diet it just does half measure or treats symptoms downstream. It gets at the root of the problem and it addresses fundamentally what is wrong with your body in a systemic way. Uh, as that CO2 rises, uh, you're, you're healing things according to a priority. Your doctor could never guess, you know, only your body knows what it has to address first. And, and so it, it does that for you and you just try to support it. So the second six weeks were almost as tough. I had farm work that I had to do in spite of all of the symptoms that were coming back and being discharged. I remember butchering 30 chickens with body fatigue that was so bad that I could barely walk from one end of the yard to the other much less carry a five gallon bucket of water down to the place we were working. But I got through it and I was happy, really happy about that. It was not a sad thing that day. It was maybe, you know, difficult, but very joyous because I knew I'd been told everything that they told me in the class came to pass, that those symptoms were discharged. And when they came back the next time, they were a lot weaker. And wouldn't you know it, I had done two sets of chickens raised this summer and the second set of chickens, I had to process them right when my second, 
round of cleansing came. And so there I was doing it all over again. But this time it was a lot easier, amazingly. You know, the symptoms were gentler, still noticeable, still recognizable, still exactly, you know, identical to before, but just very mild, just mild, very tolerable. And now I'm, I'm to the stage where I'm experiencing them one more time and they're hardly noticeable, just just barely there. I get up, I feel a little weakness in my limbs. That's about it. Just just noticeable enough for I know, oh, I need to practice. So I go and practice. And what would uh, your control pause now? Uh, my control pause, I'm in my 30s during the day. I'm not exactly sure where I am um, because it. sometimes I'll wake up, it'll be 37. Sometimes it's down in the 20s, depending on what I had eaten or the way I treated myself. And so that's that's a little, that's fluctuating uh, uh, unexpectedly. But the sea change in my body, it seems to be permanent, you know, seems to be steady. It's not, it's not fluctuating with the CP anymore the way it was in the beginning. Like I could tell if I did something that caused my CP to drop before, I might experience a symptom like a temper tantrum or meltdown, or I'd have a fight with somebody. But now there's this calm that accompanies me everywhere. And if someone else is having a problem, I can stand back and, and just observe and maybe make a joke. I couldn't do that before. My sense of humor was gone. I can lighten the mood or, or give them what they need. And, you know, with younger children, that's really important to be a parent that is in control and not melting down along with the child. Because that's a terrible place to be. It's not helping the child. Certainly not. And that's been my goal since the beginning is to help my children. And I'm finally now approaching the point where I have enough psychological stamina, enough energy, enough knowledge and experience with Buteco that I could maybe coax them into doing it and, and stick with a, a routine each day that will help them because they need it too. Mm. Well, that's huge. So, I mean, you said it being like night and day. Would you like to elaborate on that? Mm. Well, my body is relaxed, much more relaxed, not so tense. I'm not um, thinking so hard and getting nowhere, not fighting with people all the time. The, the amount of energy that's drained from a body because of a toxic or even the perception of a toxic environment emotionally is phenomenal. I mean, it's, you can't live that way. And we couldn't really help it. We didn't really know what was causing us to spiral down like that. It just seems like this whole thing has been a puzzle from start to finish. Why is this happening? Why am I so sick? Why are my kids sick too? Why can't we fix this? You're never gonna find a therapist that can help you out of a breathing pattern disorder the way Buteco method breathing can, can do it. And all it takes is, is diligence and some training. To me, that's the most amazing part. And it, it doesn't just heal the symptoms in your mind, the psychological and emotional symptoms. It heals your body. And the two are working together to cause your life to just become calmer, more relaxed, more measured. You're, you're, you're now outside of your head not so wrapped up with what you're, you know, the fact that you're overwhelmed. You, you, can't, you can't be out there for anybody else. I couldn't remember faces or names. I couldn't keep friends because if you can't remember what happened to them last week, how can you ask them, oh, how's your mother? Or is your dad out of the hospital yet? It doesn't happen. You're isolated. You pull back from other people because you might not have the energy to keep your house clean. It looks looks awful. We're finally to the point where we're working on it. 
And I'm not even gonna show you what the rest of it looks like because it's just covered with clutter. And the outside of the house is covered with trash, trash on the lawn, trash everywhere. Because we don't have the energy to care for our home and our property. And who wants to be friends with somebody that looks like they're living in chaos? And so you become isolated and you, you have no friends, you, you're sick. It's just a miserable, miserable state. So night and day, yeah. I'm not out of it, out of it yet, but, but I'm, I'm to the point where I'm seeing what I want to change and, and I'm changing it just a little bit. We're making our spaces one room at a time and the kids, the kids are responding, they're healing too, just due to the fact that I'm not this overbearing tyrant, you know, this emotional wreck, this nervous, hard to live with person. <laughs> that makes it worthwhile to me. And that life is not so unbearable anymore. I can understand why people want to kill themselves. Yeah. When they're sick like yeah. this, I can understand it. I have a new perspective on what these teens are going through that have anxiety and, yeah. and, and yeah. a myriad of other problems. It's just a living hell, hell on earth. And it doesn't have to be that way. It's really That's annoying that it's allowed to be that way. It's really annoying, but so simple actually to understand the control pause needs to go up. And once the control pause is up, or once the kids have got 80, 90, 100 steps and they can do it routinely, they're completely different people. Not difficult. With the right support. Mm -hmm. But it's not allowed somehow. I empathize exactly with what you're talking about because it was the same for me. I only had two children and that was enough. And um, it was a living hell. And then- when Never want to be that sick. No, exactly. And when, I, when it was a living hell and the whole thing was gone, I was just propelled to get out there and tell everybody about it because it's not necessary to have asthma, not necessary to have insomnia or to be overwhelmed or in pain or allergies or any of the things that you know, you can get rid of them. Those breath holds, I hated them. I, I gotta be honest, I would, would, would have done anything to get out of those breath holds. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, yeah. horrible. The only thing that made it worth it was a relief from the symptoms. Mm -hmm. And I looked like, like an obsessed mad woman. Yes. The way I was doing those breath holds just wouldn't quit, wouldn't quit. And I don't know if it takes a special type of personality, like someone who can hold on and persevere like a bulldog. I don't know. It hasn't clicked with any of my kids. I wish I could find some easy way to help them do it but the breath holds are the breath holds. But I've been through it now and I know what's involved. I have a few tricks I can share with them. <laughs> Maybe their CP is high enough that it won't be so agonizing for them and they could start exercising. It'd be good to set up some sort of obstacle course for them, like a circuit of activities they can do and make it fun because otherwise yeah. it can get very tedious and if you can do it mm -hmm. using exercise it'll work okay it's just about making it possible for them yeah and just keep keep them at it persistently every day a couple of times a day and gradually they'll come out the other side mm -hmm. the main thing is that you're better because if you're better, the whole family is better. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. My husband's noticing. I think he sees it. Well, that's great.
Well, thank you. You got anything else to say that you might think is relevant for other people? Well, I'm still living in my moldy house. I don't wear a mask while I'm in here. And I've managed to come a long way in spite of the continued exposure to black mold. Healing is taking place. So I think it would have gone faster maybe or for other people, you know, to get out of that environment, like they tell you to, don't, don't keep living in it. But we didn't have a choice. So we're, we're having to fix it up and, and remove the damage and, and uh, remediate while we're still living in it. That was a huge concern to me, whether or not healing would take place in spite of living in the moldy house, but it has. And that was a huge relief to me that I was seeing progress in spite of it. What else can I say? Um, I've watched my neighbor passed away in, in that state that I was in. And a lot of people do. This is just the biggest gift I've ever received in my entire life. And the gratitude I feel, I, I can't describe it. This is a new life. I've returned to the way I felt in my 30s before I had the cancer. Being energetic, thinking about projects, wanting to do projects, taking an interest in life, not feeling so, like everything is so big and I'm so small and helpless and powerless. Now I feel like the house is small. I can do this, you know, <laughs> it's a toy house. <laughs> I would encourage anybody to at least give it three months and see how you feel at the end of it. You can't go wrong. Absolutely not. And to just keep trying. Yeah. If you put in the effort, then the, the benefits come. If I had to describe uh, one thing about this practice, it is freedom from healthcare. I, I'm off my pharmaceuticals. And that's, and that's how I would pitch it to anyone who might be interested. You don't need to rely on your doctor anymore for prescriptions or for health advice. You know, it's, it's probably flawed anyway and, and bent on another pill, another prescription for you, you know, to put a Band-Aid on the latest problem that's popped up. But this, this is different. It's a fundamental addressing of the deepest dysfunctions in your body. And your body is healing it by itself with your help, with your support. It's freedom from healthcare. Healthcare has become a danger to your health now anymore. That's how I see it. Absolutely. This is different. It's a fundamental addressing of the deepest dysfunctions in your body. And your body is healing it by itself with your help, with your support. 